Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. What I want to talk about is my little experiment that I've been running for the past month or so and not only what I've learned about myself and how my body reacts to certain foods and nutritional programs but also more importantly to get into the mindset of someone who does have you know a more challenged relationship with food now as you've seen on my youtube channel for the past month i've been eating literally nothing but junk food and let me tell you as fun as that sounds this was probably the hardest thing that i have ever done in my life and not to mention one of the most dangerous and idiotic things and trust me i've done a few stupid things in my life now, before we begin, I just want to make it very, very clear that I'm not here to offer any nutritional advice whatsoever to anyone. Um, that is not my area of expertise. I am a certified personal trainer, and if you do have any questions about you know, exercise or kinesiology-related um, fields, definitely feel free to hit me up anytime. Um, and I can definitely help you out there, but that is just not in my field of expertise or certification to be giving out nutritional or dietary advice or making a program for someone. Um, that would just be simply irresponsible of me. So with all this in mind, this right here isn't necessarily to persuade or dissuade anyone from following a certain diet advice. This is just my experience. This is what I've been doing, 100% transparency. You can see everything's been documented over the past few weeks. And without further ado, let's begin. Now, this whole idea came to me one day when I saw an article about this professor from Kansas University, I believe, and he ate nothing but Twinkies for 10 weeks. And he lost, I think, 22 pounds and now firmly for me i believe that you know this was to be expected it's it's all about calories in calories out and for me at least i believe that is the only way that weight loss or more specifically fat loss can occur is to be in a deficit and burn more calories than you consume now while on the surface level it kind of shows that what most people have been saying is true that you can eat you know, whatever you want as long as you're in a caloric deficit, you will lose weight. But I'm gonna take things a little deeper. I wanted to see what kind of changes to my body, not only physically, but mentally and psychologically, how that would be affected. And let me tell you right off the bat that I firmly believe now that food addiction is 100% a real thing and I learned over this past month that eating a lot of processed foods, eating a lot of junk foods, a lot of sugar will make your weight loss 100 times harder than eating you know, a traditional diet. And while I did end up losing 10 pounds, which is fantastic, um, and as to be expected, as that's kind of what I planned out and programmed it to be, there were a myriad of problems that I ran into and and it just kind of goes to show that health and fitness are so much more complicated and complex than just what the scale says. There are so many different aspects to health um, that you just can't see through physical data such as you know what the scale says or even you know if you get a blood test you can measure glucose, you can measure lipids. That is only a small fraction of the whole equation and that doesn't even go into the things that can't be tested and the long-term effects that eating like this can possibly occur. Now one of the first things that I noticed probably within the first three or four days is that no matter how much you eat you want to keep eating and continue eating until you cannot move. It doesn't matter if you eat 2,000 calories or 4,000 calories of, you know, these junk foods and sugar. If you put something in front of me, I was going to eat it when I was consuming these foods. 
it opens up the floodgates. Once you get that first taste of sugar, it is going to be so hard to stop, almost impossible. And it was probably the biggest challenge to this weight loss that I, that I figured right off the bat. So I had to switch to eating just once a day because I knew the more times that I opened up these floodgates, the more likely I wasn't going to be able to stop. And this is, you know, borderline binge eating. And this is what these foods are basically made to do. They are scientifically designed to be hyper palatable and deliver these signals to your brain and almost overtake the signals to your brain to tell you to stop eating, especially when you're in a caloric deficit and you know, you're deprived, you're depleted of these glycogen stores. Once you get that taste of carbohydrates, your body goes into a frenzy. It's almost like your mind can shut off and you just eat and you eat and you eat. And it's very, very scary feeling to feel almost this lack of control. And I think it's so easy just to say, oh, you should just eat less. Oh, you should just, you know, switch out these foods from your diet. Once you kind of get accustomed to eating these foods, taking that away is so, so difficult. Yes, you can be physically, you know, full. You can be in the correct calorie balance for the day. But your mind is just screaming at you. It is so mentally unsatiated that we want this sugar. We want this energy. We need to be eating these sugars. Those cravings can become almost unbearable at times. And probably for a good half of my day, that was all I could think about was when do I get to eat next? When can I eat more sugar? And let me tell you, um, for me, someone who has you know very clear goals and was very determined and motivated to get to a specific weight, you know I was able to handle this. I was able to stay occupied. I was able to find ways to mitigate these hunger signals. But for someone who's been struggling with dealing with these kind of signals and has been eating like this for years, it's almost impossible to stop. And I think that was one of the big openings for my mind was just to see how this food can take over not just your eating habits but almost your entire day and it is crazy uh, how disciplined and motivated you need to be um, to not only deny yourself these foods and deny yourself the calories that you need to lose weight but also to deny overeating and being able to tell yourself when to stop. You just want to keep eating more and more. You, it's finding it so hard just to stop. And I do think the one caveat to that is once you do stop and the signal from your body tells your brain that your time to stop eating, um, which usually takes about like 15, 20 minutes I find from when I hit that point of fullness to when I get that signal that I'm no longer hungry. And you can do a lot of damage um, deficit-wise and calorically if you're eating these very high calorie dense hyper palatable foods and you can over consume you know, by thousands of calories by the time that signal reaches your brain, you know, you've already blown your deficit for not only today but probably the past few days. Um, it takes so much planning and so much willpower just for me to get through this month that and I'm extremely dedicated to health and fitness and somebody who does struggle with eating these kind of foods there's no way they have a fighting chance to get to get through this to be able to succeed to be able to lose weight if they continue to eat like this now for me I always preach balance I always have a cheat every day you know it doesn't have to be a lot maybe you know 800 to a thousand calories i'll eat you know maybe a candy bar or like a tub of ice cream you know something that really mentally satisfies me as well as eating you know mostly relatively healthy foods and i find that works for me i find that works great it's a great balance of being able to achieve both my health fitness and aesthetic goals 
while also maintaining my sanity and not letting these foods and health and fitness overtake my life. Um, and even more to that, there's so much more behind health and fitness than just what the scale says or what your performance in the gym, what your body fat percentage is. There are so many different aspects to health and you really kind of have to define health. It's, it's such a more subjective marker than fitness is. Fitness is basically your physical performance. How much can you bench? How fast can you run? How far can you throw something? Um, and we can measure this, you know, with concrete numbers. You bench 100 pounds or you run a mile in eight minutes. Whereas health, there's not a lot really that we know about health and how different foods and exercise affects the body. Um, losing weight, as counterintuitive as it seems, it's not about making the number on the scale go down. That's not what your main focus should be. Of course, you need something to progress and being able to see that concrete feedback is important, it helps you gain momentum, gives you the confidence that you're doing right things. Um, but it's not this thing you should be focused on and it's not something to obsess about or worry about if it doesn't go down for a week or even a couple weeks. What losing weight, what the main priority should be is to find these behaviors, these unhealthy behaviors that caused unhealthy weight gain in the first place, address these behaviors and rectify them, replacing them with the healthy behaviors and the weight will follow. If you take your behaviors that were unhealthy and that caused you to gain weight and you replace them with unsustainable behaviors that will make you lose weight, you really didn't do anything. You just replaced one bad behavior with another and that's going to catch up to you. It always does. Sustainability and consistency is key when it comes to finding the right diet for you. And it can be all sorts of diets. You can have high carb, low carb, eliminate certain foods, uh, certain timings, certain windows that you can eat. Um, there's no such thing as universal nutrition. And it's important to gain the knowledge and gain the experience of what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And then you can apply that to your life and kind of fine tune it from there to find a sustainable diet you can follow 365, 24 seven, in order for you to achieve a healthy weight and a healthy lifestyle. Now, one of my big takeaways from this is that just because you know I looked amazing and I even felt good, I didn't really notice any problems other than the cravings, but that was more likely due to being in such a caloric deficit for so long. Just because you feel good and just because you look good and you feel fine now doesn't mean that it's okay. And like I said before, when I was eating, you know, food was all I could think about. I could not stop eating until I had all my food for the day. And not only then would I be satisfied and I would kind of ride that high, get me through the day, crash at night, and then wake up and repeat again. It's, it's such a vicious cycle. And it's so easy, like I said earlier, to just say, oh, we'll just eat healthy. Just don't eat any of this junk. It's, this stuff rewires your brain. This stuff makes you crave it and constantly think about it. It's basically a junkie waiting from one high to the next. And while sugar isn't, you know, physically uh, addictive, such as narcotics, you know, you aren't gonna die or go through withdrawal if you stop eating sugar, but it's going to take a period of time where you have to get over these mental cravings because a lot of people, this is where they get their comfort from. This is where they find happiness. It, it releases that surge of dopamine in the body. And that's what's so dangerous. They get the sugar rush, they get this high and combined with a sedentary lifestyle and years of ignoring hunger cues and being able to ignore fullness and just keep eating, you know, it can wreck your health in the long run. So while well, yes, I did achieve my weight loss goal and my blood sugar and everything actually went down 
that doesn't mean that this is sustainable or, you know, in the general sense, healthy. And I feel this is a real eye opener that, you know, going from one extreme to another, you know, I'm not saying you can only eat super clean foods and only, you know, lean chicken and salads and you can never enjoy your food. Food is meant to be enjoyed. Food is such a rich cultural part of society and you can enjoy amazing filling tasting foods and still achieve a great fantastic physique it is all about balance and kind of weighing out the pros and cons you know if you want to achieve say a bodybuilding level of leanness then you're gonna have to you know sacrifice a little bit but if you just want to achieve a healthy and maintain a healthy lifestyle achieve a healthy weight there's really nothing you have to cut out nothing you have to do you know maybe you can have a donut instead of whole box just learning how to find that balance learning to appreciate food more rather than using these foods to satiate maybe eat a nice meal and then once you're full you can truly savor and enjoy your dessert or whatever you choose to eat um, so yeah I am very glad this is over um, I learned so much though and I'm, I'm really glad that I went through this experience and I'm really glad I've been able to share this with y'all and now that I'm starting to make videos once again um, I'm really excited to kind of share my journey the things that I've learned experiences I felt throughout you know these past years of lifting and with losing weight um, so make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell follow the Instagram as well to get some updates and most importantly have a good one.